The FDA is making a major change in the way it evaluates addiction treatment drugs. This could create more options for addicts. The FDA will now look at whether potential treatments can reduce overdose rates or the transmission of infectious diseases, instead of only focusing on whether it cuts opioid use. Now, this is the latest effort to fight the drug abuse epidemic that killed nearly 64,000 people in 2016. In the new book, Dope Sick, it's called, Dealers, Doctors, and the Drug Company That Addicted America, author Beth Macy tracks the opioid epidemic from its early days in rural America to the nationwide crisis that it is today. She joins us at the table to discuss. Good to see you, Beth Macy. Thanks for having me. You've got so much interesting information in this, in, this, in this book about how serious this is. We hear all the numbers, but you started working on it six years ago. And when you first started, people were like, don't use my name. I don't want to talk about it. And now people are saying, look, I want my story to be told. Because the numbers are astounding. Right. We have the equivalent of a 9-11 happening every three weeks, basically 145 Americans dead from opioid overdose. And you're right. The stigma is still such that um, a lot of people don't want to talk about it, but almost it's impossible to ignore you. I pick up my local newspaper and there's a it's young there. person almost every day. But you tell the story, you're at a grave site and a mother says to you, I just want to know, what did she say to you that she wanted you to find out about her she son? She said, I don't understand why my burly, handsome, barely old enough to grow up beard on beard. his chin, ended up dead on someone else's bathroom floor. And she said something else that I heard a lot, which is, I thought it was just pills. Mm -hmm. And it had progressed to heroin unbeknownst to her. And he never missed a day of work. Mm -hmm. and, and so many people looking for the culprit behind this. You refer to Purdue Pharma as the drug company that addicted America. Now, Purdue told us that they've, quote, led industry efforts to help address prescription opioid abuse adding that suggesting activities that led uh, that last occurred more than 16 years ago for which the company accepted responsibility helped contribute to today's complex and multifaceted opioid crisis is deeply flawed what role did this company play in this opioid crisis in the country in 1996 oxycontin was introduced and the fda allowed the company to make the squishy claim that it was because of its time release mechanism it was believed to abuse, uh, to, to lessen the risk of overdose and addiction. And Purdue sent its pharmaceutical reps out to doctors who were already prescribing Percocet and immediate release, and they said that OxyContin was safer because of this 12-hour time release mechanism. And they plied them with gifts. They paid thousands of doctors to become speakers. And this squishy claim that it was reduced to, um, that it was believed to reduce the risk of addiction was then trumpeted and became, I say in the book, that it became like a game of telephone mm -hmm. gone terribly awry. Old data was trotted out. The federal government proved they agreed in 2007 that they had criminally misbranded the drug. And in those early years, they were always blaming um, the overdose deaths, the skyrocketing crime, especially in these distressed rural areas, on, on the people that were misusing their drugs. They, they never uh, took responsibility. It's, it's, I want to ask you, this is what Purdue Pharma told us. The bulk of opioid prescriptions are not and have never been for OxyContin, which represents less than 2% of current opioid prescriptions. The company says today's increase of fatal uh, opioid overdoses um, are due to heroin and illicit fentanyl. fentanyl. You're wearing a locket. Tell locket. me about that and yeah, how it relates to what they said. I'll, t I'll show you a picture of a young woman who I followed for two and a half years. This is Tess Henry on the left. She was a, a waitress when I met her. She was a young mother. She had been um, uh, overprescribed two opioids at an urgent care center for a simple case of bronchitis 30 days. And at the end of the 30 days, she realized she was hooked. And then she sought out street drugs because she wanted not to be dope sick. And yeah, that's part, basically yeah. withdrawal. Yeah. She wanted not to have diarrhea, you know, fevers, nausea. They all say it's like the worst flu. That part under. of the problem is the overprescription. And dope sick refers, many of these people aren't trying to get high. They're just trying to prevent getting sick from the drugs. It's, right. it's a very controversial and complicated issue. And very carrying on Tess yes. Henry's name with that necklace. Right, Beth right. And thank, thank you. Thank you for joining us.